So here's an interesting panel antenna that I uh, picked up off of uh, Amazon, pretty cheap. But uh, I picked this one up because it looked pretty unusual. If I turn it to the uh, side there, it's got some Yagi characteristics. You've got the reflector on the back here and the uh, driven elements are etched into the opposite side of this board here. And then you've got what looks like two uh, directing panels uh, sandwiched uh, in between so you've got three um, well actually four layers to this uh, particular antenna so it could prove a little bit interesting so what I'm going to do is first of all jump over to the uh, spectrum analyzer because I'm really interested in taking a look at uh, how this performs so here's a quick look at the setup then I've got uh, my sweet uh, signal generator feeding in a uh, signal between 3.8 gigahertz and 8.5 gigahertz and uh, we've got the output on the uh, coupler here going to the spectrum analyzer measuring the return loss just to see how well it performs at its uh, designated uh, center frequency now if we take a quick look at the spectrum analyzer you'll see that it's pretty poor so you can see here on the uh, spectrum analyzer display it's at 5.720 uh, gigahertz so that's its uh, center frequency right there so it's almost a hundred gigahertz uh, lower than what it uh, should be for FPV most antennas are designed to run around 5.84 gigahertz and uh, you know you can use them within uh, you know a few gigahertz say 20 30 gigahertz no problem at all either way but this one is almost a hundred gigahertz lower than what it should be so it's not going to really perform at uh, 5.8 gigahertz you can see that its bandwidth is pretty narrow over its uh, operating frequency there but uh, I do like this design I think it's got a lot of potential I haven't seen anything like it before so let's take it back to the bench then and see if we can find out where they've gone wrong with the design and uh, possible improvements we can do uh, you know with this antenna in the future if I decide to take a look at it because I do find it uh, pretty interesting so it seems to be held together just with these uh, three screws here and it's got some plastic spaces in between now one of the things i don't like about this straight off the bat is the fact that they've used metal screws to connect all this together that can really affect how this antenna propagates so um we'll strip this down take a look at it and i'll uh, reassemble it again and use some uh, nylon plastic screws in there and test it just to see if there's a small amount of difference just by using uh, some nylon screws and I think you'll find that there will be so let's remove these uh, nuts and bolts from here then they're not uh, held in place very tightly it's quite loose So that's the top plate removed then, so definitely uh, a passive element there. And it's a passive element with the uh, second plate. So you've got uh, the main driven elements here on the opposite side of the board etched into place there. Be careful not to lose those spaces. And then you've got two passive elements sitting on top of here and that is uh, typical of a uh, Yagi type design and that's uh, unusual I've never seen that incorporated before although you know possibly there is if you dig deeper onto some of the uh, ham radio sites for instance they tend to have uh, lots of different uh, designs of antennas that you can try and scale down so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to measure these I'm going to measure the uh, driven elements here and the feed lines and also uh, these uh, etched out elements here and uh, put them all together and you know I'll make a little schematic so uh, you know if you want to have a go at uh, experimenting with this at home you can do but I picked this up for I think it was about seven pounds seven pound fifty on Amazon I'll put a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up for yourself but uh, without these uh, two elements here it just looks like a standard uh, you know uh, patch antenna panel antenna here and it does claim to have uh, 14 dBi uh, if I remember uh, off the top of my head if it's any different I'll put a little thing up on the screen now but uh, 14 dBi uh, sounds about right you've got 3, uh, 6, 9, 12 and then possibly these also uh, add to the effect and you know 
focus uh, the uh, signals in more to get a slightly higher gain so whether these are giving that higher gain um, you know should do if it acts like a Yagi antenna but uh, before I start uh, measuring all this out and drawing out a schematic for this let's give this another test on the spectrum analyzer and see if the uh, you know the center frequency has improved whether they're just taking a typical design off the internet and just added these themselves and it's kind of messed up that center frequency just to double check that so I've got it again on the uh, exact same setup as uh, previously and here it is on the uh, spectrum analyzer but uh, no um, I did think it might have changed uh, something but uh, it's really messed up this antenna now by removing those uh, passive elements this dip here is the original center frequency uh, that we saw on the last test and we can see now we've got a dip here I've put it on uh, centered it on 5.821 gigahertz there you can see we've got this spike here directly on that so it's not going to work or make it any better but we've got a few more dips and troughs around here but uh, no it hasn't improved anything so they haven't taken a uh, traditional uh, design for a patch antenna and just stuck on those uh, passive elements they've actually uh, done a little bit more than that possibly so uh, let's uh, get the ruler out and measure some of these and uh, get some measurements down on paper and then we can have a look at what we could have done to uh, possibly improve this maybe just uh, changing those metal uh, screws and bolts for some uh, nylon ones may um, make the difference I mean in my experience using metal like that to uh, join things together like antennas can affect the way that antenna propagates but uh, let's have a look anyway because it is an interesting design as I say so instead of writing all the measurements down which can get a little bit complicated especially when you're looking at the feed lines here I've uh, decided to make a uh, PDF of this uh, particular antenna and there'll be a link in the description where you can download it from now the basic measurements of this the uh, main driven element squares here are 17.5 millimeters by 17.5 millimeters now that to me looks uh, a little bit uh, low it's uh, a little bit small normally you find for 5.8 gigahertz it's 90 millimeters by uh, 20 millimeters now that can change the more elements that you uh, put in an array like this you uh, find that uh, you know if you just have one element like this it'll be slightly bigger than if you have an arrangement of them because they can affect each other and to remain center frequency uh, you have to alter the size of them that's one of the reasons I, I state on many videos that uh, designing antennas is not just uh, working out the wavelength for that particular antenna there's a lot more involved shape can also change uh, the measurements for something like this if I uh, change the shape slightly uh, to make it uh, uh, you know a kind of a uh, pentagon shape let's say you'll find then that the measurements and the overall area will uh, change significantly from uh, you know a basic square but uh, we've got 17.5 by 17.5 and we've got four of these here the uh, circle elements that are sandwiched in between are 15.5 millimeters in diameter and finally we've got the uh, elements here that uh, go on top of uh, this whole antenna and they're uh, 16 millimeters by 16 millimeters and they're all sandwiched in between uh, two millimeter nylon spacers now as i say i've made this pdf so you can have a go at etching this for yourself if you wanted to but i've just changed the uh, feed line slightly because uh, on this antenna you've got the ground which is uh, soldered down here because we've got some veers coming through onto the uh, back ground plane here but uh, instead i've drilled a hole here so you can come up with your coax uh, something like this just come up with your uh, center uh, you know uh, of your uh, coax coming up through the uh, PCB solder the uh, ground onto the uh, ground plane here and then just come up through the center and then solder that onto your main driven element here it's a lot more simple than uh, producing veers especially at home and that's another reason if you look at this uh, PDF here you don't actually need this cutout anymore because that cutout there is so uh, the uh, semi-rigid coax can come up through and solder down and uh, then you're not you know having the uh, distance too much so it's a cutout 
for that which you don't need if you do it my way but uh, what I'm going to do now is the first thing I'm going to do is change the bolts I'm going to use some nylon bolts instead of using these uh, metal bolts and uh, do a test again on the spectrum analyzer and see if that has an effect on the center frequency of this antenna so testing the uh, patch antenna again on the spectrum analyzer but unfortunately changing those bolts to nylon bolts doesn't seem to have made any real difference it's still off that uh, frequency so one more thing we can do now is uh, take a look at the spaces increasing and uh, reducing the space in between those layers to see if we can uh, bring that back in line to uh, more uh, 5.8 gigahertz so that's something else that we can have a go at so let's uh, play around the spacing and see if we can improve this a little bit so I've doubled the size of the spacings in between uh, those elements there so instead of two millimeters uh, gap between each one of those elements it's now four millimeters so let's give this a shot and see how this alters the uh, center frequency so it's on the test setup here but if you look at the uh, output on the spectrum analyzer it's made things much much worse so let's try reducing it then instead of two millimeters let's try and go down to a one millimeter distance so let's see if this is uh, another shot then this time the one millimeter spacing between each one of those uh, boards there but unfortunately because of the thickness of the coax it's uh, not quite uniform at the bottom but let's give this a test and see how it works out so now that we've reduced the uh, spacing between the layers from uh, two millimeters down to one millimeter have a look at the output on the spectrum analyzer I think you'll be uh, surprised at the difference so at the moment it's centered on uh, 5.822 so let me move that to 4.0 so now looking at the output on the spectrum analyzer then I've got it centered now at uh, 5.842 gigahertz as you can see and we've got a much better frequency response here than we had previously previously it was uh, down about 100 gigahertz um, down on this side so if you were using your transmitter at uh, 5.8 gigahertz anywhere in that region up to uh, say 5.862 or 70 something like that it wasn't going to perform anywhere near as good as what it does now so just by uh, reducing the distance between the elements shifts that center frequency over by 100 gigahertz so hopefully that will show you that it's not just about wavelength it's also about design as well which why sometimes on different antennas especially when I show them and build them here on this channel the wavelength can differ quite a bit in some cases depending on that design so an interesting uh, little antenna then with the modifications we got it working uh, you know performing a lot better in that 5.8 gigahertz pan that we wanted it to perform at but um, I'll upload the uh, PDF here so you can etch out your own if you want to I'll also make a note on here to uh, use one millimeter spacings uh, in here instead of the uh, two millimeter ones but uh, looking at this the uh, size of the driven element 17.5 millimeters I think if I get some boards in in the future I'll etch out some boards and definitely by shaving off that uh, 0.5 millimeters I think we'll get a much better response and then we can probably add the uh, two millimeter spacings back in there this one here that I uh, showed you at the beginning 19 by 20 millimeters that tends to work fine on its own but as I said different designs especially here where we've got four working together in a uh, array type situation that has uh, an effect on the uh, overall size of the driven element and that's why these are uh, a little bit smaller as well because that has that kind of effect but I think reducing them by 0.5 we should get a much better response but any comments or questions regarding uh, this antenna then uh, drop them below if you know anything about this uh, kind of design uh, you've come across it before um, you know maybe a paper on it let's say then please do let me know any comments or questions again drop them below I'll do my best to answer them and if you did enjoy the video uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one